Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. We know what that's about, but for those of you who don't, every year, college football seniors get a chance to prove their draft stock, to prove what they're worth to NFL scouts in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. They practice all week, it's on national TV, then they play a game in front of NFL GMs and NFL scouts to hopefully get their name called on draft day at in one of those. When it comes to HBCU guys, we have seven of them this year who are on the watch list. And a few of these guys are legitimate, legitimate NFL talents who really should hear their name called, but we know the how the past two years have been for HBCU, so we'll see how that goes. But these guys really should get their name called. So we are gonna go down, all seven of them, and we're gonna break them down. So let's start at Morgan State with Eric Hunter. Now, Eric Hunter, 6'4", 210, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I get shades of Darius Leonard when I watch Eric Hunter. That's right. Darius Leonard, the legend at South Carolina State at, at linebacker. Him and Eric Hunter, they have a similar build and they have a similar game. They move the same. Their their moves are just, it, it mirrors each other. Okay, so he's an unavoidable nightmare. Eric is. He's an unavoidable nightmare who has freakish athleticism, great length, which helps him out a lot with his moves. He has a lot of strength, underrated strength, actually. And he has sideline to sideline quickness. His play recognition is elite. Okay, and let's talk about his fact that he actually has coverage skills as well. So he's not a one-trick pony. He's very versatile. He can help out in the passing game when it comes to defending the pass. He can do that for you. Eric Hunter is considered by a lot to be the top HBCU draft prospect, and I understand why. If you say Eric Hunter, I wouldn't argue with you. I think he's number two to his teammate that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but I wouldn't argue with you with Eric Hunter. He is an unavoidable nightmare, and he is going to give you fits. Any offense he faces, he's going to have his way, and he is going to give you fits. I see shades of Darius Leonard. That is my pro comp for him. That's just what it is. Next up, we got Aaron Smith. If Eric Hunter is 1A in the MEAC as far as linebackers go. Aaron Smith from South Carolina State is 1B. I don't think he's number two, I think he's 1B. And I think he's highly underappreciated and he is my pick, all bias aside, right? Because I am a South Carolina State fan, all bias aside, I think he is my pick for MEAC Defensive Player of the Year. You see Aaron Smith at 6'2", 218 is a completely different player from Eric Hunter. He plays with no regard, he is wild. Aaron Smith, plays with no regard. His ability to shoot gaps on blitzes is something that you don't really see. Even with Eric Hunter, you don't see as much, okay? His ability to read plays and react. His read and react skills are exceptional, very exceptional. He is a guy who, when he is blitzing and when he's on you, you hear those footsteps, he covers a lot of ground very quickly. You're not gonna juke him. Very rarely are you gonna juke him. You're not gonna get past him. I don't care how shifty you are. He's locked in like a heat-seeking missile. He's locked in on you when you have the football and you're in his sight, which makes chasing you down from whatever angle not really much of a challenge for him. On top of that, Aaron Smith is one of the most surest tacklers in this year's class. I think he is he has as sure of a tackler as you'll get this year. And when I said he plays with no regard, I mean it. He's a wrecking ball. He is a wrecking ball. You're going to feel those hits from Aaron Smith when you wake up the next morning. He does not care to put that shoulder pad directly through your chest. So if Eric Hunter's 1A, Aaron Smith is 1B. Now here is the guy who I think is actually the top HBCU draft prospect this year after this season. Elijah Williams at Morgan State, the defensive lineman. He is the top draft prospect to me. And I'm gonna tell you why. At 6'3", 270 pounds, he is a grown man. Keep in mind, calling a college football player a grown man is calling him a man amongst boys. That is the biggest compliment that you could give to a college football player. Elijah Williams is a grown man. Listen to me, he's versatile. He's very versatile. Doesn't matter where you put him in on that line, he's gonna get to the ball carrier, he's gonna get to the quarterback. On top of that, he is devastatingly powerful. I am say I said all of this in my player profile on him, I'm just reiterating this. He is devastatingly powerful. Listen to me, he eats double teams like they're nothing. He's, he's just such an unbothered force with the motor and the relentlessness. He is damn near unblockable. 
Seriously, I saw tapes from him versus in a guard who I believe was what it was from Townsend. This kid is at least six 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 seven. Elijah does not care. He uses his strength to move him out the way with ease and push him down to the ground. And you've seen it numerous times. He will get you out the way. He will push you out the way like you are nothing. If you are in his path, you are going to the ground. It's that simple. As a matter of fact, my pro comp for Elijah Williams is Kalaja Kansi. They both, you could call you you could call them a tweener because of their size, but they make it work. There's more than one way to get to a ball carrier. There's more than one way to get to a quarterback. Elijah Williams and uh, Kalaja Kansi, what they have in common is that they do that just well. They play to their strengths just well. They have the strength. They have the speed. They have the athleticism. They have the technique in the hands to make up for not being 6'5 or 6'6 like you would want your defensive lineman to be. These dudes, man, they play the game in such a relentless manner. And it's, it's almost very satisfying to watch this tape, actually. So Elijah Williams, to me, is the top prospect, NFL prospect in HBCU. That's just my opinion on that and expect them to have a big week of practice, especially during those one-on-one -on -one pass rushing drills when he gets there, if he makes it. I can't wait to see him. Um, Carson Vincent, let's talk about him. 6'6", 305 offensive tackle from Alabama A&M. Carson Vincent is a guy I didn't, knew, I didn't know about. I did not know about until I was tagging this tweet by Ty. And I said, okay, well, let me go look at this guy. At 6'6", 305, He's nimble. He is as nimble as they come. Nimble feet, exceptional agility. He plays offensive tackle the right way. And understand this, last year's offensive line for HBCU ball that was going to the NFL was um, Tariq at North Carolina a and and then Aneem Dankwa at Howard. Aneem was the top guy. He got the combine invite. Um, but I was more sold on Tariq, and I said that, even though I was a fan of both of them. But Carson... I like Carson more than I like those two. And let me tell you why. This guy plays with a mean streak that I haven't seen in a very long time. I mean, his mean streak probably puts Tariq's, to, not to shame, but it's, it's better than Tariq's. It's, it's higher than Tariq's. So he's a nightmare running down the field. He can get to that second level because he's nimble and he's athletic to be 6'6", 305. He can get to the second level and make the block when you need him to. You can put him on a pull and he'll be a scary sight. But, but what I love most about him is that he literally does not stop blocking until he hears a whistle. You won't see a play on his tape where he stops blocking until he sees a whistle. He's, he's damn near on the verge of getting a penalty. He's like, he, he's damn near on the verge of getting an unsportsmanlike penalty because he will keep blocking you until he hears a whistle. It is just like the blindside scene when he took the old boy to the bus. He's, it's reincarnated with him. I love Carson Vincent. I love his tape. And this is just from initially, initially looking him up and checking him out. I love this kid. Why isn't he being talked about more? Carson Vincent blocks with no mercy. Literally no mercy. Love him. Karan Prunty. Now, Karan, 6'2", 180 pound DB from North Carolina AT. Another guy who I really liked once I really found out about him uh, after doing my research. What I love about Karan, we know Mac McClain just a few years ago was one of the best DBs to ever step foot for North Carolina AT on the football field. Karan, I think, is just as good. Just as good. Like, his patience, man. His patience and eye discipline as a cornerback kind of reminds me of Dakobe and Mac McClain. Dakobe Durant from South Carolina State, and I hate, and I even hate to admit that because you know North Carolina AT is a rival. Uh, but Dakobe Durant, Mac McClain, that patience that he has, the eye discipline, the recognition, it's similar to Dakobe and Mac McClain. It's similar, right? I love the fact that you, a move is not gonna get him. Those, those, all those, all that dancing that you see receivers do during the offseason, all, all that dancing, all those fancy moves that you see, you ain't gonna get him with that. You're not gonna get him with that. He's too patient. Karan is too patient. And his type of play would make you very frustrated as a, as a wide receiver. Very frustrated because you're throwing the book at him and he ain't falling for it. He's right there on your hip. He had success at the power five level. 
As a matter of fact, I think he was an All-American at one point. So what he's doing at North Carolina a and I don't really know. But North Carolina a and really got them a very good defensive back with Karan. And I'm going to be keeping an eye out for him. And since we play him this year, it's going to be interesting to see how he does against uh, one of our receivers. So I can't wait for that matchup. Um, next up, Kenny Gallup from Howard. Now, Kenny Gallup is as reliable as they come. As a matter of fact, I think he's probably one of the most reliable guys on this list. Kenny Gallup, he's a momentum stopper. I got to see him play in person last season when he came to Orangeburg. He's a momentum stopper. He's a guy who, if your offense is rolling down the field and you're doing really good and you know you got the momentum, he can stop that at any point, at any point. Now, Kenny Gallup is a ball hawk. I think he's awesome in coverage. I will say that. I think he's awesome in coverage. Okay, I think he sees the field in a way that a lot of other safeties don't. I think he's light years ahead of every other safety in HBCU, as a matter of fact. I think he's light years ahead. When you watch his tape, he makes plays that will get his team fired up. And the only other thing I could say about Kenny is that he's also a short tackler, just like everybody else on this list. Next up. Robert McDaniel, Jackson State, just came from Alcorn. Robert McDaniel is a real dog, like a real, a really nice DB prospect, probably the most exciting. Okay, now listen, he pops out on tape because of the hits he makes, because of the reads he makes. He pops out, like he he's after it. Once he's locked in, he's on it, okay? On top of that, you're talking about a lockdown DB, a guy who plays like Tyron Matthew, but he's bigger. That's like, that's Robert McDaniel in a nutshell. A guy who plays like Tyron Matthew, but he's bigger. Put him anywhere in the secondary. He's going to make plays. Robert McDaniel, there's not too much to say about him. If I, if I say what I, what I, if I say what I want to say about him, it's going to be what, what I say about every other DB, uh, except Karan, right? He's just, he's a playmaker. That's the best way to put it. He's a playmaker. Um, last but not least, Kendall Bowler, FAMU. I get the hype. I didn't at first, but I do now. I get the hype. He doesn't have to wow you with exciting plays. He doesn't He doesn't have to wow you with ESPN top 10 plays. He does what he's supposed to, and he does it well. I don't want to test Kendall Bowler. Like, when we see them week two, week one for us, but when we see them week two, I don't want us to test Kendall Bowler. I know what he's capable of. I know what he's capable of. I don't want, because he's going to pick it off. He's going to stop the momentum. He's going to stop your drive. I do not want to test Kendall Bowler. Stay away from him. If your offense is facing FAMU at any point this season, FAMU's defense, stay away from Kendall Bowler. That's the best advice I can give you. Kendall Bowler, even though he's a little, oh, just a little bit undersized, he makes up for that in a lot of other aspects in his game. And he's also a person who's well-disciplined with a lot of great eye discipline all right, and a lot of patience as well. Um, so... These are the HBCU draft prospects. And there's more, but these are the ones who are on the watch list for the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. With that being said, you guys let me know down below who you feel should have been on the list for the Senior Bowl. What do you think about these prospects? Who sticks out to you? Who's the best to you? With that being said, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see y'all next time. This is the Blitz Timmy Podcast. I'm out. Peace.